Well, I'm here on Ellie Beach in North Queensland, and just a few kilometres behind me is one of the seven natural wonders of the world, and that being uh, the Great Barrier Reef. And overnight, we were lucky enough to experience and witness one of the most magical natural events, and that being the coral spawning. This is the mass annual coral, sp uh, coral spawning event uh, here in the, in the Great Barrier Reef. It's the natural reproduction uh, of the next generation of corals. But as you mentioned, climate change is devastating uh, these corals, and the Great Barrier Reef is one of the most threatened living structures on the planet now. The next 12 months will be dire potentially for this Great Barrier Reef on the grounds that the IPC scientists as well as the scientific team we've been with have predicted once again at record temperatures. Now the team we spent the last couple of days with, they're trying to intervene. They're carrying out the equivalent of an IVF uh, project uh, for this coral, trying to protect or certainly secure uh, these corals to survive against these warming waters. And we spent the last few days with them on the water. For just a few short nights each year, the waters here host one of the most spectacular events in the natural world. Yep, there's coral spawn, 8.30 right on cue. We have coral spawn! Triggered by a full moon, millions of corals across the Great Barrier Reef release bundles of eggs and sperm in a mass spawning. In the slick that forms, tiny new corals begin life before sinking to the ocean floor to grow. When you're swimming through this kaleidoscope of colours and know that this is part of the immense reproductive process that enables recovery of reefs, it makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. One team of Australian scientists, led by Professor Peter Harrison, have been preparing for tonight's unmissable event for weeks. So the plan is we're going to have a dive team to go and look for corals. To ensure a new generation of coral, Peter has pioneered a process known as coral IVF. We collect a small amount of that coral spawn slick at the sea surface, transfer the spawn across into floating nursery pools, and after about six to seven days, we release the larvae back onto damaged reef systems. In the last five years, heat waves have caused the death of half of the corals on the reef through a process known as bleaching, turning them ghostly white. We're losing these breeding corals faster than they can be replaced. The comparison between diving on a healthy, vibrant reef and a bleached reef is like going into the Amazon rainforest after it's been clear filled. Instead of it being full of life and sound, it just consists of a whole lot of dead corals. So it's a very bleak environment. In fact, scientists say nearly all reefs will disappear by the end of the century due to thermal stress and ocean acidification. I've had coral reefs described to me as the lungs of the sea. That's why they're developing interventions to buy the reef more time. We who are custodians of coral reefs, we've witnessed great coral loss in the last you know, decade. We have a closing window to act and we have a scale issue. We have to regenerate an underwater forest the size of Japan. One concept being trialled here is cloud brightening, spraying a fine mist of sea salt into the air. It's hoped this will make the clouds reflect more heat and light during heat waves, protecting the coral below. The solution is being trialled off a hope. The work of Peter's team tonight will make some difference, but none take away what's threatening the survival of these unique habitats. The coral IVF larval restoration is part of the solution, but what we really need and need urgently is real and effective global action on climate change. We have to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, otherwise the future of reefs around the world is very bleak. And like Peter said, it's about buying time for the Great Barrier Reef, but this coral IVF project is not enough to save uh, the reef. The key, these scientists say, is addressing the core of the problem, and that's reducing our dependence on fossil fuels. Now, Australia is the second largest exporter of coal. We're also one of the highest 
per capita emitters. Now, there's also a new coal mine even proposed not far from where we are now on the boundary uh, of the Great Barrier Reef. Now, Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison, he's been reluctant or certainly slow to commit to these uh, net zero emissions by 2050. And it was only 10 days ago that he officially confirmed he would attend Glasgow, the COP meeting. Prior to that, he said he may not be able to attend uh, due to quarantine concerns. So the scientists in our story say there's no more time to waste, but they do note uh, that the future of the likes of the Great Barrier Reef remains in the hands of the politicians and those decisions that are made at COP26 in Glasgow. Sarah Clark in Queensland.